The world edit tool in Vintage Story is something that is very underused and something that I think a lot of people just don't really want to bother learning how to use it. So I'm just going to quickly show you guys how to use this tool as it will level up your building in creative mode exponentially. We'll start at the top. If you need to deselect any tool or deselect any tool, then click the disable tool drawing. This will make sure that you don't accidentally do other things when you're making little details with the normal building that we have in the game. To change the size of anything, size X, Y, and Z are all options. You can make it as big or as small as you want, as thin or as wide. Click the undo button at any time to undo anything you've done. Then we have the paintbrush tool. This will have several options. You can replace selected blocks, replace non-air blocks, replace specific air blocks. If I wanted to change these grass blocks over here into, say, for example, packed dirt, now I can come and hover over the packed dirt because that's the one I'll be using and I can right click over there and we'll turn whatever's inside of the selection into packed dirt. This is very nice for texturing things. You can also set it to replace air, in which case it will make mounds instead. This will help you to make some really nice terrain to work with. It's very good, very helpful. The airbrush tool will add blocks um, or replace blocks and will have a specific radius and spread. If I wanted to turn these back into grass blocks, I could do this and it will place them on top. If I wanted to replace them, I can make it replace blocks and now it will start to replace it. This can help with randomizing your texturing. The line tool can be quite helpful. I used it when I was making this build over here, this modern house. I used it to place the glass as it was very thin and chiseled and I was, I was struggling to be able to place them on top of each other in these large areas. So what it's used for is you have the line tool selected, set it to line strip, and then left click, right click, and you can go at different angles and create different types of structures. Or you can just, if for example, plan out certain little sections um, to get a general idea of a shape that you want and then fill it in later. It's also incredibly helpful if you want to create a straight line. The eraser tool will replace the selected block when you left click, um, only the type of block that you click on. I can, for example, click here, the grass will not go away. However, if I were to place a grass block there and click here, it would create a hole because of the grass block being in the way. This can help you with carving out sections and this can help you to remove things that you no longer want there. The flood fill tool will fill up any single type of basin that you have. For example, I have this hole in the ground. If I don't want it anymore, I can right click in there and it will go away. Same within here. I can right click and it'll add one layer, a second one. However, it will not add layers on top of that. It is purely there to fill up any sort of holes that you might have. The raise and lower terrain tool is used to raise and lower terrain. For example, I have created this little section over here, this big mound, simply by clicking on raise and lower terrain, changing the mode to Gaussian. You can change it to Perlin as well. It will change it a little bit and vary it whenever you change it to Perlin. It will work the same way that Vintage Story's actual terrain works. Whereas Gaussian, as you can see, will make it more uniform as you place things down. Pyramid is quite simple. It creates more of a pyramid shape um, and not perfect pyramid, but it grows more into a pyramid shape than what the others are. The grow and shrink tool does as it says, it will shrink things down if you left click and it will make them grow in different areas if you right click on them. You can use this to join two pieces together to create archways or simply to just slightly raise the terrain where you wish that there was some. The erosion tool is going to help you probably the most when it comes to terrain. You'll be able to left click or right click and it will erode it to give it a much more natural look as you go around. This can help with smoothing out mountains and different mounds and hills to make it look more varied and less uniform. It is quite a helpful tool for creating different mountains, hills, or simply for eroding a riverbed. The amount of iterations will just change the amount of variation that you have. A very helpful tool, again, for when you are using your different, uh, different terrain generation tools, 
is the tree one. You can select any tree variant within the game here as redwood pine. And we went and right clicked over there. It would create a rather massive redwood pine tree um, because I have the minimum size set to seven. So we will set the minimum size to one and uh, that should create something <laughs> a little more uh, on, on the right scale. And there will be different iterations if you set both the minimum size and the maximum size to the same. There will be no variation between them whatsoever in height. Um, they will all just simply be the exact same height. As you can see over here, they are all the same height. Whereas if you set it to something a little bit different, the minimum size to one, maximum to three, you will gain quite a lot of variation. You can use this to make larger trees than what would actually exist in the game, or you can use it to make smaller trees or simply you can create your own trees using the next tool. The import tool is quite helpful. In order to do this, we're going to need to go back to the selection tool. If I have some sort of a build that I would like to, to copy, to redo, then what I can do is I can click on the import tool, oh, sorry, the selection tool, get the magic wand. The magic selection tool is going to make it so that you select all the other blocks here. If I were to go here and click clear to clear this and I click over here and then up over here, it will automatically select the entire build for me without me having to go click on the ground there, make a tower and click up over here to get the whole thing in. Manual is for specific small sections. Magic is to try and get the whole thing. Sometimes you will not be able to get the magic one to work properly, in which case you can do manual or you can just simply click to grow the selection in any direction that you think is necessary. It's very simple, very helpful. You can change the north, south, east, west, up and down selection size. You can also rotate to the side, to the side, to the side and back again. If I undo this, it'll get rid of that hole. You can relight the section over there to fix lighting issues that you might have. Um, you can then click copy. If you go to the import tool, you can import from clipboard. You can change replace value, replace all, um, replace or uh, replace only air is good if you don't want to have holes in the ground. Then you go onto any block, right click, and it will simply place down the building. You can also rotate the selection to the side before placing down the building. And it will give you many different variate, well, not variations, but it will give you many options for skipping rebuilding things over and over. It is a very helpful tool. There is a single mod that I would recommend that you use with World Edit, and that is Carbon Copy. I will have the link in the description of this video. Carbon Copy will allow you to import and export or to export your files so that you can use them in another world. So over here, for example, I have currently got this uh, modern house. If I wanted to move this to a different world, I would have to use commands. The commands will be on the website, so you can go and reference it there yourself or on the, the Vintage Story Mods database where you'll be able to download the mod from. In order to do this, first, you need to go and put your feet somewhere. So if your feet are touching the ground, it will start selecting from this point. You're going to go dot export mark start. This will mark the start of the selection that you're about to make. We will then go up to the opposite corner and make sure that we are higher than the building dot export mark end. This will create a selection that looks different to the one in the base world edit. It's slightly lighter in color. And then we can go dot export save. And then you can type in the name. I will call this modern house, modern house. And then you click enter and it will now save it. You will need to navigate to your Vintage Story data folder. This is normally found within your app data. So type in your search bar percentile app data percentile. It'll take you over here to your C file. If you've saved this somewhere else, it will not be here. Go to Vintage Story data 
and then you want to go up to exports and you will see over here we have got the modern save over here now i would like to point out i have not been able to get anything over one megabyte so far um to export i'm still experimenting with the size this 7073 kilobytes is seven megabytes so in order to put this in you will now need to go back to your vintage story but have this tab open as well once you have both open you will have the copy or the saved files over here you will have your um specifically the import tool open over here and you will simply drag the one that you want. For example, this bathhouse I created the uh, template for, for my live stream, where I am building the ultimate survival world and vintage story. Please, uh, if you want to, you can check that out. I will be streaming it again very, very soon. Bring that in over here, go back into vintage story. And now I messed it up because I types in there. So don't forget to hit enter <laughs> because otherwise it will think you are still typing. Go back into the game. Oh boy, what did I do now? We are back into the game. And you'll be able to place this. If I right click with a block selected over there, I will be able to place this over there. And now I can place infinite of this one. It's not in this world. It was used with carbon copy to create and bring it in here. The repeat tool will take a current selection and move or grow the selection. Um, and it will either mirror it which means that it will copy it onto the other side or it will repeat it. So in order to do this, we first need to take our selection over here. We will go over to the mirror tool and we will say keep current selection. We can then repeat or mirror. So if we click mirror and we right click on it, it will now mirror it on the opposite side. Click undo to undo it. You can also change it to repeat, but if you click on the side of the block, it will put it on that side of that block, but only for the one selected. It will not work if I right click on this one, it will only work if I right click on that one over there. And you can create some interesting builds this way. You can make things look quite nice. You can duplicate things. You can mirror things. It makes it a lot easier to do certain things. You'll figure out what they are when you realize you need to do them. The move tool allows you to take whatever selection you have just made and it allows you to simply move the blocks along. You can move them north, south, east, west, up and down. You can also change this to move the selection specifically so that it only moves the selection and not the blocks. When you change it back to move blocks, it will only move what you have just selected now. And that is a quick start on how to use world edit. You, there are many other tips and tricks that you can use for here. I hope you found this helpful. Please do uh, let me know what other types of videos you would like me to make tutorial-wise. I'm happy to help. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video.